Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jessica. It is uh, one of our favorite times of the month, show and tell. So it is the beginning of August now. This is my show and tell for the month of July. Let's hop right into the projects. So the first quilt I wanna share with you today is a mini quilt I designed. And um, I don't know if I finished this at the end of June or the beginning of July. My records aren't that good on this one. <laughs> I do know I've had it up for most of the month of July on my wall. This is a mini quilt, it measures 21 inches. Um, I will link the pattern to this below. I have this um, one board that my husband made and it's kind of like a large frame and it fits uh, like a 21 inch mini quilt. And I've had kind of just like little blocks there every now and then, but nothing really permanent. So my hopes are to make a mini quilt there every month. So I have one for each month of the year. So this is the one that I made for July. And this pattern is in my shop. I'm gonna come close. I used a pantograph and I sized it down really tight for the quilting since this is a small mini quilt. So I thought that would look really nice on it. And I think it does. Um, I used blue from my stash. All of this fabric is just from my scrap bin and my stash. So uh, it was nice to just pull this off my shelf and start making it. And then I just backed it in a plain fabric because this is gonna be hanging so you won't really see that. This was fun to make. It just took an afternoon to whip it up and it was really, really satisfying. Now, the next thing that I made at the beginning of this month is this bag. I was part of the book tour for the book called A Field Guide to Making Bags by Sally Tomato. And I chose this bag, the beginner tote. This was really fun to make, quick and easy. It looks difficult, but it's not. I um, The supplies are from Sally Tomato's website. I did make a mistake in ordering this, uh, in ordering the materials, and you might already be able to tell this direction is not correct. <laughs> but I decided in the end that it looks nice. The leaves have movement and I'm okay with it. But what happened was um, in, the, in the book, this uses just uh, quilting fabric for this outside. And I decided to change it. This is actually cork. I'll come close and see if you can see. This is a cork fabric on the Sally Tomato website that you can get. Um, what I didn't realize when I ordered this was that the width of this is quite a bit smaller than a width of fabric. So I would have had to order more. But what I did was when you're making this bag, your front panel, you cut it to install this zipper. So I cut it first instead of starting with that whole panel. And I could get it out of the size fabric that I had, but it's just the direction's not correct. So this is a pocket and I have this lined with um, a canvas. The whole inside is a canvas. The handles are faux leather from Sally Tomatoes website. It's really cool. I've never um, worked with a faux leather before, so I like this. And, um, and then I chose these gold zippers. I thought that would look really nice with this. And then in the inside, it also has the canvas that I have in the front pocket. And then there's a slip pocket here too. So I thought this turned out really beautiful. Um, you can see some of the details. I did have a little bit of trouble with um, getting this to sit nicely in here. Um, so what I ended up doing was one side sat really nice and one side didn't. I don't remember which was which, but what I ended up doing was um, hand, just hand sewing this down, just like tucking that down with just a couple threads. That's all it needed. And it turned out really cute. This label also came from Sally Tomato. It says handmade. Uh, so this was a really fun project and it looks really difficult, but it actually was not. So I definitely think I'll be making more of these. Let me just show you. You can see here, it's a, it's a good size bag on my body here. This is nice. So I definitely be using this in the fall and I'm definitely gonna be making more of these um, gifts, uh, maybe even smaller sizes because once you kind of have the knowledge on how to construct this, you can cut a couple inches off and make a small bag. 
the book, A Field Guide to Making Bags, it has, in the beginning of the book, it has just a whole ton about making bags, the supplies you'll need, a whole thing on interfacing, a whole thing on like zippers, different kinds of fabric you could use, the different styles of the bag. So the book's really educational in the beginning, um, quite more than probably two thirds of the book is just like education on how to make bags and like the basic foundations that you need when you have questions, it's really nice to refer to. And then I would say the last third of the book is projects and they, they range in skill from very beginner through more advanced and it's just a really fun book so um, I was happy to be part of that tour and make this and I'll definitely be making more I really enjoy making bags the next project that I made is probably one of my favorite quilt quilts that I've ever made um, I wrote the pattern for this it's called starry cabin I'll link to it below and I'll show you the whole quilt in a minute but uh, basically it is this whole quilt uses a star block with a log cabin so this is one large block and the fabrics that i use in this quilt they're called santa fe it's a really nice southwesterny line i just thought these colors were beautiful in here i think it ties nicely in with the quilt design but also with this quilting uh pantograph this is called icat number four and i thought it looked so beautiful with this let me show you the whole quilt. Here is the whole Starry Cabin quilt. So I just love this. I love star quilts, you know that. And log cabins are one of my favorites too. And this is just a beautiful combination of the both. I think the fabrics are stunning in this. And the pantograph, I love this one too. I'm thinking about doing a quilt along for this one. I've been getting requests for it. Um, I'm thinking about doing it mid fall, but I will keep you posted on that. I have this Christmas version in my head of this that I want to make a reality. So um, I will keep you posted on if we will be doing a quilt along for this. And again, the link for this pattern is below. The next quilt that I made this month, um, it uses a pattern called Hocus Pocus. It's a pumpkins quilt. I've actually wanted to make this one for quite a while. The pattern is by The Pattern Basket. And I use this new collection called Shades of Autumn. And it's really beautiful. It's got, I think you can see it here. These, it's got metallic gold accents in it. And I did the coloring a little bit different than the pattern. I used one of the, um, this is actually called tea green. It looks like a light blue, but it's called tea green. This is from the collection Shades of Autumn. And what I did was I used one of them for my background. The collection is uh, creams, oranges, this shade of uh, tea greens, and then also browns. So what I did was I picked one of the tea greens and I used it for my background. And then I made all the pumpkins out of the creams and the oranges. Uh, browns for the stem and then I had to add in a green. This collection didn't have any green in it so I just picked a green for my stash and I used it for all the leaves. Let me show you this whole quilt. And here is this pretty quilt. So the, um, the sun's a little bit bright so the colors are a little bit brighter than they actually look. Three different sizes. There is small, medium, and then large. It has these stars above some of the pumpkins. Actually, it's above all of the small pumpkins. And I use this lovely floral background. The sun is like filtering through the trees here and um, it's hard to show you it without those dappled dots on it. But I think this is probably pretty close to what it looks like in real life, a tad bit lighter than that but it's a beautiful color. It looks so nice as the background. Then I use this plaid, which has the beautiful gold accent in it for my binding. I used a flannel that I had in my stash to back this, and it's ultra cozy. As soon as I wash this, it's gonna be wonderful to use in the fall. Just really looking forward to having this one out. Like I said, I've been wanting to make this quilt for a while. I'm glad that I finally made it happen this month and I know that we'll be enjoying this quilt in the fall. 
And the final quilt that I made this month is a big one. <laughs> I have been showing you this. Um, I believe I showed it at the end of the June and I said, I'm working on this one. It's gonna be a big quilt and I finished it and I was so happy to get this finished. I love it. It's so big that it's hard to show you any of it, but I'll start with one block. <laughs> so this quilt is a quilt pattern by Amber Johnson of Gigi Symbol. It's called Summer Stars. Um, and what's fun about this is all of the center of these large stars are made in the same way with the same amount of squares. But the way that you vary the coloring makes them look different. So I played around with that in the quilt, just like Amber recommends in her pattern to do that. And it brings some variety to your quilt. It's very fun. Um, I ended up doing in the pattern, I did the queen size quilt and then I ended up adding a border. So her quilt ends right here normally. I added this large border, it's a seven inch border. So my quilt finishes at 111 inches and this is the biggest quilt I have ever made. I'm planning on putting this on my bed. I'm really excited about finishing it. Let me show you the whole thing. So here it is in all its glory, this giant, giant quilt. <laughs> so you can see if you look at the centers of the stars, there are color variations. I ended up doing a few different kinds and then just repeating those kinds with other colors. So the first one I did looks like little cross stitch X's. The next one I did here is it has uh, all the same color around the outside and then two different colors in the inside. Another design I did was this one where I used the same color around on the outside corners and in the inside but this is different and the final one kind of color arrangement that I did is this one where I used two of the same color squares here so it looks like a rectangular bar but they actually are squares pieced together so I did four different color arrangements and I made four of each of those because I have 16 large blocks here. Amber designed a really beautiful pattern and I love all these stars and how they look together. And again, you can see how I added that border. So her quilt pattern stopped kind of like right here. Those um, stars didn't have an edge to them. The binding was there. And I added this big border and I finished off all the stars. I'm really happy with how it turned out and this was a big project and it feels good to get it done. For the backing, I used this green Lori Holt fabric that I had in my stash and all of the fabric used in the top is from Lori Holt's new collection. Um, it's called Hometown and so all of the color prints come from that one collection. They look really beautiful together. She always does a great job. She's one of my favorite um, fabric designers. So. The whole top is made with hers and then uh, I used Riley White for the background and then I used this uh, green that I had that's a really old collection of hers but I had it saved up for something and I had enough to back this giant quilt so that's what I used. And that finishes up for this month. I had one more that was so close that I was hoping to finish. All I needed to do was bind on it, but I didn't get it done. So I'm putting that in the next month's pile and hopefully I'll have it ready to show you. If you have any questions on these quilts, just let me know. I'd be happy to answer. I put all information down below so you can go check out the patterns if you wanted to make these yourselves. And as always, thank you very much for following along. I love having you here and to share this with you. So I'll see you back here next time. Thanks again for following along.